I appreciate everybody. Thanks so much for joining. It's great seeing you. I, I'm sorry that this is, you know, a bit pointy since it's the last research series of 2020. But in some ways, it's going to be good to see the other side <laughs> of 2020. There's brighter days ahead. Um, and I look forward to picking up with the research series again in late January. But we're very lucky to finish off on a really high note today um, with Rinzo. So as you guys, I'm sure, are already aware, but just in case, if not, maybe just a bit more about Rinzo's background. Uh, Rinzo is a fifth-year uh, public policy PhD candidate at the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs and the Department of Political Science. His work engages research on administrative capacity, non-state service provisions, co-production, and collaborative governance in public administration and comparative politics, the fun stuff, in other words. Um, and today he's gonna be talking to us about his work, Is Governance Enough? Assessing Municipal Capacity and Organized Civil Society Participation for Complex Service Delivery. Um, so Renzo, this is a really, really interesting topic. Um, I learned a lot, frankly, in reading through it. So I appreciate you um, teeing it up for us and look forward to a great presentation. Following that, per usual, uh, we'll have a discussion. Use the chat box, use the raise hand feature, whatever you prefer. Um, so thanks so much again for joining everybody. And Rinzo, without further ado, over to you, good sir. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen now. I'll have to open my slideshow. All right. Okay, um, so I think you should be seeing my screen right now. It looks great, Correct. perfect. Not the presenter view, the regular one, right? Yes, it looks like it's full screen and, and good to go. Yep. Okay, awesome. Thanks again, Scott, and thanks uh, to the Austrian Workshop. It's a really amazing opportunity to be able to share uh, my work with you, listen to your thoughts, your feedback. Uh, this is work in progress, of course. So anything uh, that you have to say is going to be very, very valuable and well taken. Um, so please, um, I would love to hear what you have to say at the end. Uh, my presentation, as Scott said, is about uh, complex service delivery and trying to understand what might explain different performance levels between simple services and complex services. And what I focus on is on the case of waste management. and trying to understand three core factors of local governance uh, and try to understand how they have a role, whether they have a role in explaining these differences. Okay. So we usually care about decaying waste. We, we care about decaying waste uh, because it has many different consequences. Uh, we don't like seeing waste rotting on our streets, on our back backyards, uh, generating health, uh, health problems. So there are many different reasons why we care about waste. Um, but we generally know that if waste is decaying and if it's laying on our, on our backyards, front of the streets, uh, or, or in front of our houses, it's because something's going wrong. Somebody is not doing the job they're supposed to be doing. But first and foremost, we care about the consequences and, and what it implies. So we know, of course, that it has implications for public health and property value, uh, but we know less about the implications that waste might have on um, increasingly important issues such as climate change. Uh, waste produces methane, which is, which is much more con a greenhouse gas that is much more contaminant than carbon dioxide. And we also know less about what uh, decaying waste or waste that is not properly uh, treated or collected uh, uh, and the consequences it might have when, when there is flooding in, certain, in a city, when there's heavy rainfall and how it might have uh, implications on destroying the infrastructure when it starts blocking the drainage and sewer systems of, uh, of cities. Uh, and this is increasingly happening with climate change. Global South uh, cities are increasingly experiencing more severe rainfall uh, and also as a result, more severe flooding. And part of it might be because their waste uh, management systems are not properly operating. 
So what we see in the global south is it's it's a uh, there are two issues or two types of services that have implications of this. So we when we see decaying waste or waste lying around, we don't necessarily know what service is causing the problem. And in the global south, we do see cities you know, with clean streets uh, and without uncollected waste, but we are less likely to see properly disposed waste that is not untreated or overflowing. So um, what we see is that the clean, the streets tend to be clean, but it's less likely, or it's more likely that waste is not properly disposed of. Uh, and so municipalities that are confronting these issues are clearly having local governance uh, problems. They don't have the right the capabilities that are necessary to address these types of services, particularly more complex service uh, service implementation needs. And how we look at uh, performance issues, as in the case of waste, is usually by, um, by focusing on general administrative capacity, ish, capacity issues. So we start uh, tr trying to understand, well, the problem of, uh, of capacity in this particular city or municipality is that uh, their structure is not uh, properly designed. They don't have the financial resources. They don't have the right or the right of the the personnel that is not that is not adequately trained or in the right number, uh, leaders, managers don't have the experience or education, or they are lacking information systems to manage all these processes. <laughs> so these are very important factors, uh, and they do have an effect based on evidence that uh, explains performance of of services, but what we know less is about what is what are the capabilities that that are present at the office level, the office that is directly responsible to deliver uh, a particular service. And we also know less about uh, how civil society is involved and how these two actors, the municipality and civil society, collaborate, uh, especially when it comes to providing more complex services. So for this reason, I, I use a case of waste it's very relevant uh, to examine complex service delivery. And we have to disentangle it, the services uh, that are part of waste management as a whole. They are not all equal. Not all waste services are created equal. They don't do the same things. So uh, there we, when we start doing that, uh, that work, we can see that uh, services have different characteristics. They have different implementation requirements. And so uh, we, we can, by understanding that, we can begin to understand or we can begin to see that uh, there are, why there are certain differences in terms of performance. And that's how I, uh, I unpack waste management by looking at two services and comparing them uh, because we tend to see collection, which is a more simple service and disposal, which is a more complex service uh, and how they they end up having uh, these performance, varying performance levels. Okay. And when we begin looking at uh, countries around the world, their municipalities, especially in the global south, uh, you will see that they have rel rel relatively higher waste collection rates. And, uh, and lower proper disposal rates, as I was mentioning before. Uh, and you can see this by looking at, at new, the income levels on waste collection rates. As the income level rises, they are doing better at, at collecting waste, but they're not, doing, they're not performing as badly as we would expect at the lower end of the GDP per capita spectrum, but they are doing terribly with regards to waste disposal. And we can, when we look at a country like Peru, uh, which has had important improvements in waste collection, more municipalities are collecting waste uh, than previous years, but at the same time, fewer municipalities are using proper waste disposal methods, such as landfills uh, or recycling, uh, as uh, in recent years. And um, while Peru is not necessarily a lower income country, it's considered an upper middle income country, 
based on the GDP per capita, it's municipal waste service delivery issues likely compared to lower income countries in the global south or to highly unequal countries around the world because it has wide spatial wealth disparities at the municipal level. So that's why looking at these figures and uh, understanding the specifics of a country like Peru make this particular country uh, important and provides uh, insights into a range of different conditions uh, um, of different countries. And we also can, when we look at the, at the regional level, we, we see a similar situation. So at the bottom end, Sub-Saharan Africa suffering a lot, but doing more or less adequately, definitely not ideal, but not terribly with waste collection, but doing having really bad situations well not as bad in open dumping but if you here over here sorry uh, it's doing really really badly in terms of waste disposal while latin america there's a, lar a large diversity in terms of the country conditions and and uh, and development but you can see that they're performing really well with waste collection on average while disposal is not as bad but it's they are still having a large proportion of untreated and inadequately collected waste. And, and as I said, these are municipal averages. Um, so they are not necessarily reflecting how the country as a whole is doing. So if we begin to disaggregate the reality, we might, we, we might see extreme situations in, in different countries and even within a country. So I use two different questions to guide my research based on this evidence. Uh, first is could service specific municipal administrative capacity and civil society organization participation explain differences in performance between simple and complex services? And the other one is could local collaborative governance drive performance dispa disparities between services that vary in complexity? So looking at the theory, uh, we have to ask ourselves, how does administrative capacity matter for performance or the performance of services? And when we look at general capacity, as we were discussing earlier, uh, we can see that it is crucial, but it, there is limited research in terms of the within conditions at the office level. We know that uh, general administrative conditions, such as the structure of the organization, HR quality, available financial resource, leadership, all that I discussed at the beginning, they're all not directly tied to the delivery of a, of a particular service. So it's important to start looking and, and, and looking at the internal, at the unit delivering the service, what, it's, what are its capabilities, um, what, how, and how those capabilities might relate to the service that is going to be delivered. So, uh, since research doesn't necessarily address that part, I think, and, and what I, what it, what the, the question that it begs is that we should be, we, we might be wanting to see how simple or complex a service is, to, or how simple or complex it is to manage the service, and then to understand what are the available administrative unit, or what are the, how specialized and equipped is the administrative unit delivering it, for this particular task. So you might have to, we have to, we, what the literature, based on what, on, on, the, on the available literature, what we might want to think is about the extent of complexity of the service and the specific capabilities at the unit level, which we don't tend to look at when we study uh, performance and administrative capacity. With regards to waste management, as I said, uh, they require different types of capabilities by service. Overall, they need general capabilities such as being able to diagnose problems, make waste projections, devise plans for each specific service, operationalize uh, multiple management strategies for these particular service services, and they also need to speak with different in the, within different actors in the locality to be able to know what, what are their needs and also to coordinate the implementation of the service. So, but when we look at collection, collection involves matching routines uh, with the available waste picking personnel, uh, the, clean, the cleaning equipment that is available, 
the operational vehicles that they might have and drivers. So it's more labor, labor intensive and it requires very minimal planning, mostly focused on routines and low skills. Looking at disposal, however, uh, it, it needs specific infrastructure that is, more, that is sophisticated, such as a landfill to treat or con uh, and contain waste or recycling facilities to segregate and compact or compress re reusable waste. So it's more capital intensive. It's a service that, as I said, demands specialized infrastructure and very specific technical knowledge. So this means that administrative capacity and, and how it affects service performance depends on how on what are the specific skills, the specific equipments, the, the specific policy tools that are present in the units in charge of delivering it. It's not necessarily the case that having general capabilities in the municipality are going to explain how, was, how th these particular services are going to be performed. There are specific uh, characteristics, administrative characteristics that are important to address this service. So looking at the within conditions of administrative uh, units are, are crucial in this regard. With regards to civil society, it's well known. Uh, the evidence is, is very clear. Uh, with regards to uh, the role that they have on improving service performance, that there are specific features of CSOs that matter, like being formal, locally rooted, being equitably and well managed. So the strength of the CSO has a critical role in uh, when it comes to assessing how they influence uh, service delivery performance. The service sector also matters. Uh, the objectives that the CSO has and their, the level of involvement are also critical. So performance depends on the characteristics of the CSO, particularly how active, participatory, and embedded in the community or in the locality they are, which means that not that just by examining participation or, or the fact that they are engaged in delivering a service won't necessarily tell us much about the role that CSOs have on service delivery. And it's also unclear how, uh, how, they, how the role that they have when services become more complex, which the literature doesn't necessarily differentiate uh, to see whether, uh, whether it their role varies when services are different, especially when they are more complex. In waste management, uh, CSOs are engaged in, decision, in the decision making and also in the delivery process. So they, they end up participating in, uh, in the discussion of uh, identifying service issues, devising plans, but also in sweeping the streets, picking waste and recycling. Most of the people involved in waste are, tend to be informally employed. Uh, they are vulnerable individuals and stigmatized. Uh, mostly, mo most of the in individuals involved are women from low-income households. Uh, single single mothers and uh, and also their children end up participating in some situations and as a result their involvement is disregarded or marginalized by local government because of these social conditions and the specific characteristics of these individuals that end up participating however CSOs with re, re, uh, regardless of these specific characteristics of their in, of their members when they have so when they have more robust capabilities, they likely have more negotiating power. So they're going to have more influence on the municipality and the management of, on the service and how and what service is going to matter. And since waste collection is more salient, it's more visible, it's more immediate, then it's, it's more likely that CSOs might pay more attention to this specific service and which also might explain certain differences in performance outcomes com when comparing waste collection to waste disposal. Now, the third local governance factor is the collaboration between government and CSOs, which also the evidence uh, indicates that finds that is very important for service performance. And it happens when public employees and CSOs are acti actively engaged and contributing to the decision making or provision of a service, which is also a case of co-production. What happens is that uh, CSOs get together at the community level, particularly when governments 
are not adequately providing services. So when they're fail, failing or being or having low performance levels for a most needed service. So that's when a CSO organizes locally and engages in, uh, in a collaboration. But some research finds that uh, collaboration doesn't always improve performance. So one limitation is that uh, for, for a collaboration to have adequate results for on, per, on service performances, then that when the municipality doesn't have the capabilities uh, to manage the collaboration, uh, especially affecting whether and how they open up and manage participatory participation venues. And also uh, when there is poor, poor CSO involvement, which limits the, the participation of more vulnerable communities. However, as, a, as in the case of a CSO involvement, there, is, there isn't enough literature discussing how a collaboration and its role and performance varies when services become more complex. So as a result, I, I, I come up with three hypotheses that I test. The first one is uh, administrative capacity specific to waste management is positively associated with improvements in both simple and complex services, in this case, waste collection and proper waste disposal performance. The second one is uh, that the present, uh, presence of active locally embedded, locally embedded CSOs is positively associated with improvements in uh, waste collection performance, the simple version of a service, but not associated with uh, increased proper disposal performance. And the third is that local collaborative gover governance with the participation of civil society in the decision making is positively associated with both uh, types of services. So I use a, a sample, uh, a panel of Peruvian municipalities uh, at the district level across three years, 2014, 16, and 18. Uh, and I end up with uh, a sample of, of, of 1,200 municipalities or 3,600 uh, um, municipality year observations. And I use two dependent variables, collection performance and disposal performance. For collection performance, I use two different variables. One, collection frequency, measured in number of days per week uh, that routines are deployed. And the second one is collection quantity, me 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 uh, measured on, in terms of metric tons per day per 1,000 people. And for disposal performance, I measure the percent of waste that is properly disposed in landfills or through recycling methods. With regards to the independent variables, I, I use waste management administrative capacity, CSO involvement, collaborative governance. The first one is measured through an index on waste administrative capacity uh, using factor analysis. The second one uh, for uh, administrative capacity is waste management specific capacity, looking at equipment available for each of the two different services. For one for waste disposal in terms of vehicles, uh, for, sorry, for collection of vehicles and disposal equipments. For CSO involvement, the first one, the first variable that I use is active locally embedded CSOs, looking specifically at neighborhood uh, associate neighborhood committees and how they are, how they participate locally using factor analysis as well. And the second one is CSO concentration by based on the number of poverty alleviation CSOs per 1,000 people. And uh, collaborative governance, I also use an index uh, constructed through factor analysis. These are the variables that I use uh, to construct the, the waste management index, uh, different policy tools, some related directly to waste, some directly to related to environmental management, which includes portion of waste, given the data that was available. Uh, then active locally embedded CSOs for CSO involvement, uh, measuring neighborhood associations and their participation uh, through different variables of participation and the activity uh, and how active the neighborhood committee is locally. Collaborative governance through uh, the, the activity or the implementation of local coordination committees that involve uh, civil society actors and municipal actors uh, to make decisions and also whether they are part of, uh, whether civil society is part of uh, participatory budgeting or the development of local economic development plans. Control variables, I use general administrative capacity as a control variable, also an index, political variables, demographic variables, geographic variables as well as controls. 
the statistical, the statistical models are two-way fixed effects, OLS regressions based by province and year, uh, and center errors being clustered at the provincial level, which is one level above of the municipalities that I am assessing. And these are the sources that I, that I use to construct the, the data set. This, these are all the variables for uh, the general administrative capacity index. And so going to the results, they show a number of different things, but what's important is that uh, waste administrative capacity, uh, so or strengthening administrative capacity at the municipal waste office level is associated with increased waste collection frequency and proper waste disposal. In terms of frequency, what it means is that one standard deviation increase in waste administrative capacity <clears throat> sorry, is associated with a half a day increase in collection frequency per week. And in terms of disposal, a one standard deviation increase is associated with uh, an additional two percentage points of waste properly disposed annually, which is, seems insignificant, but, not, uh, but it isn't because it's any improvement in making in disposing of waste has very important implications locally. The same we find or similar situations we find for specific waste administrative capacity. So looking at the vehicles for collection and the equipments of disposal, and it does increase. So it has an effect, a positive, so it, it is positively associated with frequency, waste collection frequency, waste collection quantity, and disposal uh, and proper disposal, improving all these three dependent variables. For instance, uh, uh, there is uh, one certain deviation increase or in having more collection vehicles would increase uh, collection frequency by 2.5 hours. It would increase, uh, more vehicles would increase waste collection quantity by about 88 pounds. And uh, having more disposal equipment, equipment would increase proper disposal by three percentage points per year. Neighborhood participation increases collection frequency. Uh, collection frequency only collection frequency by about four hours per week. So more one certain deviation increasing in the participation index improves waste collection frequency, excuse me. However, we find that CSO concentration, the other measure of civil society participation reduces collection frequency and increases collection quantity. And there is no effect on any of these three variables um, with regards to collaborative governance. And general administrative capacity seems to increase only collection frequency, but not the others. So to summarize, uh, now I'm, I'm ready to conclude. <clears throat> the overall findings are that waste administrative capacity does improve both Simple and, simple and complex uh, services. So it improves waste collection and waste disposal performance. But general administrative capacity only improves collection, which is an important finding. CSO involvement, specifically the participation of neighborhood associations, improves waste collection, but has no role on proper disposal. And collaborative governance is not associated with either of the two services, simple or complex. So with regards to waste management administrative capacity, what we see is that uh, it's a similar situation as it occurs in other Global South countries or cities, um, is that municipalities are having a hard time providing complex disposals, which is not unexpected but are keeping the streets clean. However, knowing that specialized policy tools and, special, and specialized equipment for a particular service is, is relevant and does have or may have an important effect on improving more complex service delivery. So knowing this has implications for uh, local administrative capacity and local level performance of complex services, knowing that minimal improvements at the office level, not general capacity, might, might help them deliver 
services that are more difficult to manage uh, reach better performance levels. However, as I said, improving general human or having more or better personnel as in the municipality as a whole, more technological hardware and software, or a results-based budgeting program doesn't necessarily uh, affect complex service delivery. But uh, what happens on the ground is that uh, municipal waste management units are more focused on collection frequency because it's easier to, to manage the service. It requires minimum, minimal planning, as, I, as we discussed at the beginning. Uh, and general administrative capacity is also, uh, also focuses a lot on this particular service for political and socially salient salient or, or the social importance that these <clears throat> this particular service has excuse me with regards to collection quantity it it depends on the specific having the specific equipment evidently so you won't be able to collect more if you don't have the equipment and that's what the data is showing in a way and certain disposal uh, equipments also strengthen uh, strengthen capacity and that seems to also lead to increased proper disposal so knowing what are the conditions within the office have important policy implications, as I already said, especially for complex services. With regards to the role of, uh, of CSOs, as it is, it's generally expected that it's going to increase performance of any service or all services if they are, if they are active in the delivery or the decision making. But in this case, it's, we're only seeing positive results or a positive association with collection frequency. Why is this the case? CSOs might be more focused on, on waste collection and, that, and they are adequately substituting, substituting the government, municipal governments uh, in the delivery of, of, in its delivery. However, for proper disposal, there are no effects and there are uh, two or three main reasons, three main reasons. One is that it's showing us that participation is not enough and that CSOs need to have certain capabilities to be able to get involved in these services. There is weak uh, administrative capacity that is specific to this service that is not allowing managers to handle or properly uh, involve the participation of CSOs. And there is also discrimination in terms of gender and socioeconomic characteristics that bias, biases managers' perspectives on how, how these individuals might perform if they get them, to, to get them involved in, in the delivery of a complex service. So, and, and another question based on, what, on the findings is that why is it only increasing frequency but not quantity? And uh, collection teams, what this shows is that collection teams are being sent out to collect more waste, but they're not necessarily picking up more waste. And a reason, one or, or two reasons, that, uh, three reasons that I find is that, that I think might be explaining this result is that clearly there are not enough, uh, there isn't enough equipment to, co to carry, to collect the waste, even though we see that there's a positive association between having more vehicles uh, and being and having improvements in waste collection quantity, and there is a, there are also political reasons that municipality might be sending out collection teams to 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 show the citizenry that they are doing their job, but the concern is not in, in how much waste is being collected, and there's also a limitation in terms of supervision. There aren't enough people in the waste unit to supervise how well or how much waste is being collected. So uh, a few policy implications or policy relevant uh, conclusions. Small improvements in, weight, in specific waste management capacity does have an effect or in, and matters for both types of services, simple and complex. Local CSOs that are active, that are locally embedded, uh, are crucial to keep the streets clean. And they, have, they can also improve complex disposal performance if they have the capabilities, the municipality has the capability, the, the administrative capacity, and if discrimination is addressed as well. For collaborative governance to be important, uh, 
in deliberative spaces, municipal administrative CSOs should focus on measures that are cost effective and that are important for this specific service. And also uh, it would be important to strengthen uh, local collaborative decision-making venues. All this has uh, insights for, for, to, for developing a local strategic approach to address climate change by looking at waste management as a case and how diverse or uh, looking at two specific services, one more simple and one more complex, and understanding that there are many other climate change related services, then we might also be able to see that the, these three governance factors might matter and that we might have to start looking at more deeply at the, at the implications they have. Um, thank you very much. Um, and that's, that's the presentation. Thank you so much, Renzo. How about a round of applause? Virtually at least, that was fantastic. <laughs> Certainly not a waste of time. Terrible pun, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it was really, really, really great. Um, so the floor is open per usual, guys. So I'll try to do my best to keep track of the, um, of the queue. But please jump in uh, with questions, with comments for Renzo. I, I just kind of had a little one to get started. Were you surprised at all about the you know lack of local CSOs to improve kind of bulk uh, you know, delivery kind of frequency as well as overall, you know, services. It seems to, it, you, in some ways, I'm kind of thinking back to Mike McGinnis's colloquium discussion about the ways in which we, you know, re rely maybe too heavily on collaborative or even polycentric governance in some circumstances without thinking critically about, you know, what it can and can't accomplish. And this seems to be kind of a case study along those lines. Yes, I was actually surprised. Um, but, I, well, part of it, Part of the reason I was not completely surprised is because I also did pre-dissertation field work uh, in certain municipalities mm -hmm. and I was I was able to see how the extent to which different CSOs were involved in the two services and you could clearly see that they're not as involved uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in disposal in the disposal services but the reasons why um, that was puzzling um, and so thinking through and looking at the literature uh, and also looking at the interviews that I that I did, well, part of part of the reasons could be that there is a discrimination issue. Uh, most of the individuals, as I said, involved are low-income uh, women um, with different racial features. So there's something going on there that could possibly explain that. But uh, I'm I'm more curious now because I need to do field work later on for the dissertation. And uh, I will be very interested in trying to uncover those mechanisms. Why? Why is this the case? But it is. It is definitely surprising. Yeah. No, and, and I'd love to hear more about, as you said, kind of next steps and how this fits into the overall project. But first, yeah, um, uh, Tonya, would you like to kick us off here? Yeah. Um, uh, Renzo, I just want to say it's been really fun uh, following. Uh, basically your dissertation project and seeing its development for the past year. Um, it's been really great. And I thought your presentation was great. I love all your motivations uh, for this work. And I really, I really like your discussion of like what you think is going on with these findings. Um, I think that was really, really nicely done. Um, I, I was just wondering, and it's kind of related to Scott's comment. Um, do you think, uh, I was wondering, we might have talked about this when you actually did your like initial qualitative paper on this from your pre-dissertation field work, but um, did you, have you tried controlling for like proximity to a landfill? Because I wonder with CSO involvement um, and participation, if something would change, if like the community was like much closer to a landfill and filling the effects of improper waste disposal more strongly than other communities. Um, this might have been something we've talked about before, but. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so you mean that um, CSOs that are closer to a landfill might be more involved relative to those that are further. Again, trying better disposal methods. Like I'm just thinking about salience of issues, like because the whole argument um, is that why we're seeing frequency of picking up trash being a more um, a more prevalent thing, and why that's what you're finding is because it's more salient. But like if 
these communities are closer to landfills that are, are, are feeling the effects of improper disposal more strongly than maybe other places, then I, I wonder if you would see like mm. almost an interactive relationship there with that, where that relationship actually flips a little bit. I don't know. It, it was just something I was thinking about. Yes, just and thinking of salience of things like it's. Yes, that's a great point, and I, I might actually need to look at that in in the field. Um, and that's an excellent point. I, I didn't think about that, um, and I don't think I'm able to measure that uh, through the quantitative data uh, because the neighborhood associations are just identified uh, through variables that are not uh, geographically mapped. Uh, they just are, they are just part of the whole district, but uh, not how proximate they are to a landfill. So that's definitely something something important. I appreciate that that point. Yeah, but like I said, Renzo, I, I've like I've really enjoyed seeing this all progress. So awesome. Thank you. Awesome. All your comments are have been definitely helpful and helped a lot this research. So thanks again. You're here. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, and then it looks like uh, Brian is next, and then we'll move to um, Sasha and Jordan after that. Okay, um, interesting stuff, particularly trying to sort out, okay, you know, what's different about providing the more complex services? Um, so one question is kind of workshop question, thinking about local public economies. You know, are there any examples of municipalities, you know, using the services of landfills, either from other municipalities or specialized authorities or whatever. Um, you know, I don't know whether it shows up in somehow it could be found in your data or something to look out outside, but you know, the ways in which that kind of specialized provision uh, could affect what's going on. Um, and the second in terms of question, in terms of CSOs, um, you talk, a bunch of what you talk about is more CSOs is expressing demand, but for the complex services, are there cases where CSOs really are helping to either innovate or just provide, you know, complex services like, you know, composting or recycling or so on? Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Uh, great questions. I don't think I have the answers for all of them. Um, based on this specific paper, I don't think uh, I can capture uh, coordination between municipalities and how they are efficiently managing the disposal part of the service together uh, to reduce costs and, uh, and ha that having an effect on why there is less involvement or the capabilities they have might be different because they have the landfill in another municipality that's taking care of it. Um, so. I don't think, but it's a good point, and I, I'll definitely be mindful of it when, 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 and if I do field work again. <laughs> but um, and with regards to CSOs, that's also a qualitative question that I would that I would need to look at across cases uh, more more specifically. So it's definitely something that happens. I once spoke with. Uh, a manager at a municipality that was really successful at uh, at at work at working on waste, um, and what made a difference relative to the others that I had seen uh, when I did pre dissertation fieldwork was that they had a, a more more conscientious civil society that was more aware of the importance of waste and the environment, and that made a difference in terms of how they end up. Uh, being more efficient when providing these services, but also in terms of how at the household level, they, uh, they were able to uh, segregate their waste. What is recyclable, what is organic, what is inorganic. And so they were able to, be, to, to contribute innovating in a way uh, on how the municipality might also respond to, uh, to their, their education or their awareness of, of these services. Um, so that's what I could say in terms of innovating uh, as far as I could see or remember particular cases, but um, the data that I have doesn't allow me to, to look at that, but that's definitely a, a great question to think about uh, for, for sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Brian. And uh, Sasha. Uh, thanks. Uh, Enzo, congrats for the, the presentation and your work. Really interesting. Uh, my, my question is on uh, 
how you frame uh, the, the gap between collection and disposal. Uh, you frame in terms of complexity, and that's why that's the uh, mechanism that there is this gap. But uh, thinking about this problem in Brazil, that is very similar, I think. Uh, my my guess is that collection is uh, is necessary to to keep the problem away from people, so people value the the service differently. And disposal is more, uh, the problem is already far from, from everyone. And so people don't really see and government respond to this, how people value. That's what I think uh, happens. And I wonder uh, if you thought about that and how you think that would fit in your, in your framing. Yes, uh, thank you, Sacha. Yes, that's that's definitely definitely part of part of the reasons why we see this these uh, some of these results um, because of the salience, because it's more socially and politically important. Um, there is more uh, more pressure, you know, to say it in a way uh, to provide waste collection better. And when you're disposing of waste, you don't see where it goes, so you don't necessarily uh, care or are aware of what happens. So there is there is a lot of that uh, going on, uh, but there are also uh, everything has to do, mostly everything has to do with politics. So the fact that municipal units don't have uh, specialized teams, specialized policy tools for disposal might also respond to those reasons. Um, so it, it, that's you're definitely definitely right on, on, on what you're saying, and that's 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 part of uh, that's a big chunk of what I what I need to look into in the future. So thanks. Thanks a lot, Sacha. And I forgot to ask if either of you guys had follow-ups, but if you do have follow-ups, feel free. <laughs> Let me know. We can also return back to you again. Um, and it looks like Jordan, you're up next. Hi, Renzo. Really loved your work. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's been really exciting to, to hear about your project. Um, I had two um, questions. So the first questions, um, and these are based off of my experience in Jamaica, um, is what my, is there anything in your research that indicates the, the, the role of globally North countries um, on these factors? So I'm thinking about the fact that a lot of the technology and material um, the technology and the equipment for waste disposal in Jamaica is um, donated by other countries, um, especially and also just in a lot of industries. So in transportation and all these things, you'll see different um, forms of the technology or the equipment being donated. And so there's actually kind of maybe limited um, limited capacity or limited um, control that the actual uh, country, developing country, has over um, how its efforts are structured if, if so much of, the, of these outside variables such as their equipment um, and their technology is determined by um, the potential things that they receive um, for these goals. Um, so I wondered if your research kind of attended to that or if that was going to be something um, that would come up during field work, kind of this question of like where does if where does this equipment, um, where does the technology, and potentially like where does the training come from? Because I also know that sometimes in certain sectors, people are trained outside of the country and then they um, like pick up roles later. Especially in the case of China is uh, part of the Belt and Road Initiative is training people in China for different roles such as in agriculture and infrastructure, things that might eventually benefit the bus and project. So that's one question I have. The second question I have um, goes to the um, idea of innovating. Mm -hmm. So something I noticed um, in Jamaica, I, I didn't notice CSO involvement um, with waste disposal, but I did notice that there were kind of these informal groups of sometimes family, sometimes just women, sometimes groups who would follow the, the, the garbage trucks and kind of like pilfer through and take out things that might be usable. Um, and so I wondered if part of the role of CSOs or how much of that role of um, not having a larger quantity of um, waste that they're able to cycle through is because of the ways in which they, 
they um, are viewing the waste and maybe viewing the waste as um, something that can be recycled or repurposed. Mm -hmm. um, and I especially saw people, um, something that might also be considered is that I, I often saw larger groups of people following like the waste trucks um, in higher income areas. So they would like travel from their lower income area to go to follow the waste trucks in a high income area with the expectation being that the waste might be um, better repurposed. So I'm wondering if people have additional goals that are outside of the interests of the states and so they're not legible to maybe the data that you might be receiving from the state. Um, but that would all be things that you might have to learn during field work. Awesome, Jordan. Thank you. I appreciate this. Um, so with regards to technology training equipment and how, how it comes from uh, more industrialized countries, um, I, I don't have a way of capturing that in this particular paper. Uh, but based on the field work that I was able to, to do, it doesn't seem to be the case. Other, there are some municipalities, I must say, that do have uh, investment projects to construct landfill and, and, and improve their uh, infrastructure uh, for disposal through uh, lending programs, South, South, North, South, uh, World Bank, uh, uh, the Japanese Development um, I don't remember the name, but there's a Japanese uh, international organization that provides uh, grants and funding to developing countries. So they are also uh, involved. Um, so, but they provide the funding and some technical expertise, uh, but, uh, but that doesn't necessarily happen throughout the country. Those are particular cases. So there is a role uh, of the involvement of these technological transfer uh, to these municipalities, but um, but uh, yes, I I'm I'm not necessarily looking at that, but it's something to of, of course think about. And your second question, um, I I wasn't sure I I really understood what what you what you meant. Um, so maybe if you could rephrase it or say it again, please. Um, yeah, no worries. Um, thank you for answering the first question. Um, basically, I guess what I was asking is. Um, might the roles, might the way that the CSOs are viewing waste be different from how the state is viewing waste and that might be coming up? Like, because you mentioned, I think in your data that the CSOs, when they were collecting waste, even they might be more productive, but they would not be collecting more waste, mm -hmm. something like that to that effect. And so I wondered if it's in part the way in which they conceive of waste. Um, so for example, thinking of it as something that could be repurposed as opposed to what maybe the state considers repurposable or recyclable waste. Hmm. That's an interesting point. I haven't, I haven't thought about it really. Um, so you mean the why CSOs don't appear as having a, an, an effect or an association with collection quantity. Um, and yes, um, there's definitely some, some of that. Um, most of the CSOs in this case that I was looking at are neighborhoods, neighborhood associations. And so they, what they do on their own might not necessarily be captured on the data. Um, on their own in terms of waste, but yeah, I definitely have to think about this question. It's it's a great one. I, I wouldn't know how to how to answer it right now. Well, thanks, Jordan. I'll I'll think about this and, and ask you for more clarification later, of course. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jordan. And um, Sacha, I saw that your hand was still up as well. No worries if that was from earlier, but if you had another follow up, just wanted to give you the chance. And anybody else, of course, too. And, and while folks are, um, are thinking, maybe Renzo, you could just kind of reflect on how this particular piece fits into the bigger puzzle, kind of that we talked a little bit about earlier. And I, I'm wondering in particular, you know, there's so many policy hooks and so many ways you could take this, right? So whether it's, you know, in reference to the sustainable development goals and, you know, even an incoming Biden administration and how they could do more to encourage, you know, the sustainable, um, uh, you know, use and mitigation of waste in the developing world. I'm, I'm just kind of wondering uh, where, where you see the overall project um, heading, because that, that would help me in some of my other, you know, recommendations too. 
Yes, uh, so part of this uh, research came about uh, because uh, I wanted to look at what was, how was, how were local governments being involved in addressing climate change? Mm -hmm. And also knowing the limited capabilities that uh, municipalities have generally, but there is large expectation of how to implement climate change measures for mitigation, adaptation, uh, in, in developing countries and how much they are being affected. But, but when you want to implement these policies, you confront with, uh, or you might not, the research sometimes is not aware of the fact that they have planning, um, administrative limitations. Uh, they don't have the people with the technical knowledge to handle all these things. So um, a way for me to, to explore that was uh, looking at a service that is associated with this uh, larger issue. And so mm -hmm. when I went into the field, I saw all these differences and then there I began, began unpacking complex services were versus simple and looking at the complex service allows me to, <clears throat> in a way, uh, address certain implications with uh, climate change policies that need to Im be implemented locally. So I think um, that's how I would want to connect this particular research to a bigger picture problem. That doesn't mean that waste on its own is not very important because of the several other implications that it has, uh, but given the, and it also it's widespread across the global south. Mm -hmm. So, but I wanted to add this particular tone by looking at the implications for climate change uh, mm -hmm. um, and what happens at the local level. I also see some comments uh, about uh, the, the number of landfills uh, on the chat that yeah. uh, there are in Peru. So yes, I'm, I'm aware of that and it's, it's a big issue. And as Brian was mentioning, yes, the number of landfills, there are municipalities that share the landfills. Uh, but in terms of the data, the number of landfills have been increasing uh, in recent years. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, municipalities are adequately using them. So that's, I think, what my, my data is allowing me to capture to measure uh, that, that progression in terms of having the availability, but not necessarily having the capacity. Um, and well, part of the reason that, the, that there aren't enough landfills, there are many. Uh, part of it is, as, as Milagros was saying, I think, um, mm -hmm. it's the, 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 uh, the financial part. Um, but the financial part in the case of Peru uh, responds to administrative capabilities of the office. So in Peru, to get these large investments, you need to, you need to develop uh, uh, investment plans that are approved by the Ministry of Finance. And these plans have to be very detailed, very, very, very sophisticated. And to get to that level of sophistication, you need the capacity within the office um, to be able to draft them, to be able to hire the consultants and supervise them adequately so that they respond to the technical specifications that are required. Um, so we go into the cycle uh, again of uh, trying to think uh, about why is this is not happening and why they're not having the landfills or why they're not having the budget. Uh, it all comes down to the capacity within the office and something else that I don't look at, which is the larger political, local political issues that happen uh, at, in, in many municipalities across Peru. I wouldn't associate it, associate the issue of lack of landfills with the financial part directly. Uh, that's the first impulse we tend to have, especially in Peru, uh, that we think that the financial part is a huge thing. But the core, and I've worked at the municipal level in Peru and I've traveled across the country, and the core problem is that municipalities don't have the capabilities and that responds to larger decentralization issues that I don't necessarily look into with my research. But that's that's how I approach it at least i don't i don't think uh, that looking at the budget is the core problem um, mm -hmm. it's part of it but it responds to another issue oh sorry gustavo i spoke a lot can i go and I... yeah no no for sure as, as, as you can tell we're running a little bit short but please please do and i'm not Just sure if you had a final point too like let's do a quick lightning round at the end please very brief comment so the, your last comment Renzo, i was all the time while you are talking, thinking about that, and then essentially it's, um, so they are applying for grants at the, at the federal level to get, to expand capacity of, the, of these things, rather to whatever, increasing local taxes. So I think that could make a huge difference on, the, on what are you doing and how you are doing it. 
And that could also be a, uh, one key explanation of why administrative capacity is the binding constraint rather than whatever resources through changes in the tax rates at the local level. But I think you're, you're already answered to that. It's like, just push you to further explore that, that dimension, that, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Yes, that's definitely a thing to look into. No, thanks a lot, Gustavo. And Jordan, did you have a final point too? Or question? It might have been for me. No, Maya. no. Oh, okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Um, well, really such interesting work, Renzo. I really appreciate it. And I, I, I love the connection with the uh, overall work on sustainable development and climate change. It built so well from Lena Lin's report for the World Bank. Um, if you haven't seen David Victor's presentation, I'm just remembering it maybe a little bit over a year ago for, in the colloquium. Um, he had some really nice you know, thoughts about making policy electricity work in the climate context. So I'm sure it's archived on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen it, uh, you might just take a take a glance at that and happy to connect you as well with him um, if you're not already connected because I could see some see some you know useful dialogue going on there. And it's 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 so instrumental, this this topic of waste management as you guys see there in the link on the chat box to many of the sustainable development goals. So I think you're really right to take it on. Um, so thanks so much again for highlighting this important work with us. One more round of applause for Renzo. Really, really appreciate it. And how about a round of applause as well for all of the all of the fellows and research awardees and visiting scholars um, who did such a great job over the course of this fall. Thank you guys. Thank you. And for all of the, the regular commentators. I um, really, really appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you guys. Um, sooner rather than later, hopefully even in person sooner rather than later, some promising news on the vaccine front, right? So fingers crossed. Uh, but look, regardless, late January, we'll pick up where we left off. In the meantime, keep safe, um, be well, stay in touch. Let us know if we can help out with anything in the interim. And I hope you can have a restful holiday break <laughs> as much as possible anyway. Thanks so much again, everybody. And great job, Renzo. Thanks, Scott. And thank you, everyone. I really appreciate all the comments. Take care, everybody. <laughs>